3-1-0-8-6-4. Stations, your final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds until airtime. Duck Insider. We need to get community. We need this thing to be bigger than just our little circle of players and coaches. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon. With two seconds on the clock, he hits it. That's the bigger picture in this thing, allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue-collar mentality this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it. The Ducks have won. We get to struggle together, and we get to have joy together. Dante will dribble it out. The Ducks are Pac-12 Tournament Champions! I am so proud right now to be the head coach at Oregon. Oregon's a Fiesta Bowl champion in a 12-win season. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. Walk-offs are fun. A huge series tonight in the Pac-12 softball race. Also, it's opening day around Major League Baseball. Six pro ducks in action. New uniforms coming for Oregon football. Men's and women's golf are both in action. A busy weekend on the horizon for track and field. The Oregon tennis teams, Oregon lacrosse, beach volleyball, Lots to get to today. Part two of our conversation with beach volleyball head coach Jason Dillard. We have that for you coming. And Jess Drummond, Oregon women's lacrosse head coach, will join us here in just a little while as well. Baseball with the walk-off last night. But first, softball, huge series starts tonight. The Ducks coming off a wild roller coaster game on Tuesday against Cal State Fullerton. It is spring break here at the University of Oregon. UCLA, the opponent, televised on Pac-12 Network at 7 o'clock tonight. KWVA has got the hometown call. Our night, Yurezki is down there, the OSN broadcast intern extraordinaire. Also the voice of the Oregon softball team, the sports director at KWVA, the student radio station. They made the trip. They've got the hometown call for you coming up here this evening. This is a huge one, though, in the softball standings, and it's a little bit difficult, so bear with us because – it's uh, the point of the season where some teams have had their bye week and some have not. So that's why Stanford heading into this, uh, I'll call it a shortened week because of the Easter holiday and uh, not a lot of sporting events going on on Sunday. Stanford is 6-0, and technically in first place in the Pac-12. But get this, Oregon is 7-2. and Ducks have won all three of their Pac-12 series so far. Then it's Washington at 6-3. and and then it's UCLA at 4-2. and two. Now, UCLA, though, is coming off a victory over Washington. Bruins, who have been a bit down this year. They're 18-8 and eight overall compared to, for example, in Oregon at 20-10, and 10, Washington 22-5, and five, Stanford's 25-5, and five, just some of the good numbers around the Pac-12. And then Cal is 3-6 and six in league, but 25-8 and eight overall. The point I'm making... This is a huge Pac-12 series tonight. If Oregon can get it done against UCLA, say the Ducks drop a game but win the series, Oregon would be 9-3 and three in a really, really, really good spot heading into the rest of the Pac-12 season. And even though UCLA, I bring up the win over Washington because UCLA, I think, is starting to play better, starting to play like the Bruins uh, that we're used to seeing on the softball diamond. If the Ducks get a win as the team in second place over the team that's in fourth place, bodes well for the Ducks moving forward. Big series, it starts tonight, televised on Pac-12 Network. Oregon down in Westwood, the Ducks taking on uh, what I think is an improving UCLA team. But at the end of the day, look, it's, it's UCLA softball. Uh, they've won a lot of games. 5 o'clock tomorrow, and then uh, actually an 11 o'clock scheduled start for Oregon softball on uh, Saturday on Getaway Day, the Ducks and the Bruins. All of those games are televised on Pac-12 Network, and Knight yureski has got the call on KWVA. Huge series for Oregon softball. Best of luck to the Ducks here this evening. Now, baseball last night on the other diamond, a true pitcher's duel. And actually very nice weather for the first eight innings. Well, first seven innings or so. 
Ducks scored on a wild pitch in the third inning. So, yeah, it was a pitcher's duel. The only moments where either side blinked were really pitching mistakes. Ducks scored on a wild pitch in the third, and then we had a lightning delay for about an hour in the eighth inning. When it all started, it was runners at first and second with one out in the inning. Logan Mercado was on the hill after issuing a couple walks. Well, we go all for this long lightning delay. You're not going to run Logan Mercado back out there. The Ducks went to Bradley Mullen. He walked to, tied the game. Pitching staff, duel, but each pitching staff blinked, and suddenly it's one-to-one. Ducks got out of the inning with only the one run of damage. So we went to extra innings. Ducks had a couple opportunities to score throughout the game, didn't take advantage. Seattle got a big swing to take a 4-1 to lead in the 10th. The key moving forward for the Ducks is get Derek Gellos out. Derek Gellos was 4-4 four for four with a three-run home run, also a walk to boot. If the Ducks get that guy out, Seattle didn't have an offense. Um, anyway, the point being, you can never count this Oregon team out. I think Mark Wazikowski would tell you, and he will tell you coming up post game. We'll hear from him in just a moment. The Ducks did not play all that well last night. Ducks needed to start quicker offensively. The Ducks needed more innings like the 10th inning. Ducks are down 4-1 to one in the 10th inning. Two infield singles, basically swinging bunts to the left side. Like, the Ducks capped a couple balls to the left side. Then a base knock up the middle by Anson Arrows. And that ball, and this is where baseball is so difficult sometimes. You just offensively need to put the pressure on the opposition sometimes. The ball actually ricocheted off the pitcher's foot, made it a tougher play for the shortstop. Otherwise, would have been a double play in the 10th inning. So... In the broadcast booth, I'm sitting going, okay, well, Ducks have put some pressure on. So that scored the second run of the game for the Ducks. Oregon's down 4-2. to two. Then a sacrifice fly from Mason Neville, who came into the game earlier because the Ducks had a one-run lead and they wanted him in there for defense. The depth for Oregon on display. Ducks had to utilize the bench a bit. Hits a sack fly, gets uh, within one for the Ducks now. Two batters later. Two hit batters later, I should say. Drew Smith, who was really the best player on offense for the Ducks, hit one through the left side. Oregon walked it off 5-4. Top of the 10th inning, it's like, oh, man. Lightning delay. This this stinks. Ducks haven't played that well. Next thing you know, Oregon wins 5-4 in a game that the Ducks had to have. I, I mean, Oregon had to have that victory. Um And they had to use some of their, shall we say, better bullpen options to get there. Uh, Michael Friend started the game, was really impressive. Five innings of work, four hits, no runs, no walks, five Ks. He threw uh, 56 total pitches. Ducks anticipate maybe stretching him out in coming weeks. Ryan Featherston was good in two innings, no walks, gave up a hit. And then Logan Mercado had the two walks, ultimately the one run that was costly. Bradley Mullen with one and two-thirds innings of work, three hits, three runs. But then Matthew Grabman, we saw him out there. Haven't seen him much this year. Going to hear from him coming up. He was ultimately the winning pitcher after one inning of work. So the Ducks did have to use some some options, but so did Seattle. In this four-game series, four-game sets always test the depth of a bullpen. Ducks are going to get tested a little bit, but they need offensively to play more like the 10th inning and not like the first nine. Maybe the extra innings were good. Mark Wasikowski talking post-game. Brought to you by the Wayne Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center. Fight like a duck with exceptional cancer care close to home. Oregon with game two against Seattle tonight. A 5 o'clock first pitch, 445 pregame show across the Oregon Sports Network. Mark Wasikowski last night breaking down a game where ducks feel like they didn't play all that well. Most importantly, found a way to win. Here's Was post-game. I'd like to see the, I, mean, I guess maybe bookend. I mean, you got to uh, see a quality start to open the game and then good fight uh, from your hitters to close the game. That's what I saw too, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, what would you think of Michael's performance first off? Um, well, I mean, that's his first start of the year, probably first start since junior college baseball. And, you know, he threw the ball over the plate. I think he got his five innings, and, and it was a quality start. So I was happy for Mike. I was happy for what we saw out of him. And uh, it didn't surprise me that we were, we were pleased and walking buddy, and he filled up the zone. What did you guys uh, do or talk about during the uh, the lightning delay? Um, I, I'm, I don't want to get too much into that, sure. but I appreciate the question. You guys moved, moved through down the order. Nice to see him get a couple knocks, including the game winner. Yeah, we're just looking for the right 
balance in the lineup. We haven't found it. You know, we we, we look we're looking for the right players in the lineup right now, and and uh, we're working through some of that. You know, I mean, and it's uh, it's just a process and a process we're going through right now. Found ways to get guys on base in that last inning, and even if until Drew maybe or, and, and Anson probably guys weren't necessarily stinging the ball. Can you still build a sense of momentum when guys are getting on base and moving around and? and Put a couple of runs together like that. Well, that was one of our messages. Was just you know, don't need a hero. Just just give us a good at bat. And you know, a lot of times you, you you know you see the guys that are young um, and they haven't gone through the the phase yet or the stage yet of, of what it takes to be successful. And so you get a lot of young guys that um, when it's a one run game, they think, hey, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to hit a home run. Instead of just giving a good at bat, you know, I mean, it may turn into a home run. It may be a walk, a hit by pitch. It may just be a, a you know, a put a ball in play type of a scenario if you don't get a pitch to hit. But um, the hero mentality, sometimes a young player uh, carries that hero mentality up the plate with him. And, you know, where everybody wants to be a hero, to, to be a hero, there's a process about that. And it probably is, is the opposite of trying to be the hero. So, And is that a message that you delivered at some point and you felt like got through the guys? Well, I think we took two timeouts in the tenth inning to talk about the exact same stuff, you know, uh, whether it was base runners or whether it was, and I think we took a mound visit too, and we talked about the same kind of stuff, and we're just trying to settle guys down to where they can, you know, function and operate like we see them when they have their emotions under control, and so that's the whole objective there. You had started, you know, one for ten runners to score position. Just what did Seattle do to kind of neutralize your bats? Well, they throw three of their top four pitchers tonight against us, you know, to try to beat us. And, and we, you know, we caught some breaks. And at the end of the day, we, we ended up uh, winning the ball game, which is great. And, and you know, their number one, arguably their number one starter started tonight, or he's going to start tomorrow night. The Smith kid that they're pitching tomorrow night is a guy that is, uh, is giving him a chance to win every single game. I think he's been in a one run game almost each and every one of the starts. And each, he's, he's won three of those starts at least. And I think the team's won more than three of them. So he's, He's their best guy, the two bullpen guys, best bullpen guys through tonight, and another starter through tonight. So, you know, they they were definitely trying to beat the Ducks tonight. Do you think the lightning delay did help kind of refocus the team or, or get your legs back under you? No. No. I don't think inclement weather, weather helps. Um, you know, it's just part of what happens, and both teams have to deal with it. It's equal, at least, for both teams. Was that, was that tough for the lightning delay to happen in that eighth inning when Mercado basically just gets into the game and then, you know, it's an hour delay, so he couldn't go back out there. Is that kind of tough for you as a manager, or is it, or is it nice to have guys like Mullen as, as an option in case those things happen? It, it, you just, you know, it's, again, it's the same for both sides, and you just got to try to deal with it as best you can. With that lineup and you guys are trying to tinker with, just what, what kind of goes into the background of that? Like, where do you... Uh, just what's like the, I guess the the ideas of putting them through in seven hole, moving ants into the three. Just what kind of goes into that process? Well, I mean, you're looking for balance throughout your lineup. You're looking for um, ways of of if somebody tries to match up against you, that you can best uh, overcome being matched up um, with certain pitchers out of bullpens and stuff like that. And so, you put a lot of thought into that. Who's good versus right? Who's good versus left? You try to have a balanced approach, and then. At the end of the day, you're just looking for, you know, do you, do you have nine good hitters that you can have in your lineup? In its most basic term, I mean, that's that's as simple as it gets. You know, if you got nine real quality hitters, probably doesn't matter a whole lot where you hit them um, in some years. Um, and then in other years, it does because, you know, you, you've got to be able to balance it out with with um, best chances of scoring runs when guys get going. This obviously didn't, didn't come back to the haunt or anything like that, but, but taking out heard there and the, I think it was the seventh mm -hmm. or the eighth and then putting in the bill just again didn't didn't haunt you there at the end but it was, that was just a defensive uh, replacement and overall well Mason DeVille's been hitting it better than anybody's been hitting it in practices and stuff like that and so getting him into the game um, we don't feel like as a risk even though maybe his stat sheet isn't sexy yet um, he's an unbelievably talented player the ball that he hit the right field on other days is hitting the top of the hitting facility and he wins the game um, and so um, he's a really talented player. And so uh, to take Jeffrey out, um, you know, there were reasons for that, that, you know, he's a really good player too. Um, but yet I think we've got several good players. It's just a matter of getting them, getting them all going. That's Mark Wasikowski, Oregon baseball head coach. You can hear it in his voice. Oregon was disappointed in the performance last night. Still won the game.
That's just where the Ducks are at right now. When we come back and hear from a few student athletes, uh, Drew Smith had the walk off. Michael Friend, best pitching performance for his young Oregon career. And good to see Matthew Grabben back and hear from those student athletes coming up. Also, Jess Drummond, Jason Dillard, new uniforms for Duck football. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Don't go anywhere. Duck Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Big time Pac-12 series for Oregon softball tonight as we welcome you back to Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Ducks are in second place in the Pac-12. UCLA right behind them in fourth. If Oregon wins this one, uh, the Ducks have, let's put it this way, more games behind them than most teams in the Pac-12 that are in the upper half of the conference standings. You catch my drift, Ducks will be in a good spot if they can get some wins. Uh, UCLA in action against the Ducks here tonight in Westwood, 7 o'clock. Pac-12 Network and KWVA has you covered. It's our Toyota Women's Sports Schedule Spotlight. Toyota, let's go places. Meanwhile, for Duck Baseball, 5 o'clock tonight. Had to come from behind in extra innings after that delay. A 4-1 to one game. Ducks won it 5-4. to four. Mark Wazikowski hoping for some improvement in tonight's ball game. Good, though, to see Drew Smith get the bat going a little bit. Uh, Smith was the only duck with multiple hits in the starting lineup. Moved him down to number seven in the order, and he went three for four. And actually, I thought he got better as the game went on. Drew Smith struck out in his first at bat and then strung together a few hits, including the game winner through the left side. Drew Smith talking with the media last night after the victory for Duck Baseball. A bunch of guys in front of you that last week they just kind of found a way to get on. Yeah. Even if guys aren't necessarily all staying in the ball, can you build a sense of momentum in the dugout, that sense of passing the bat that you can then feed off personally? Yeah, absolutely. It's just all about setting the table, and I think all the guys that led up and to start the inning, Bryce killed it with that first at bat. And, uh, all the way down the lineup, I mean, everybody's just getting pluses. That's the only thing we were chasing. So. And so then what's your mentality when you step up there? Just do the same thing. Just, just try and help the team out the best I can. What, when, what was the emotions then when you came through that one? Oh, it was awesome. Um, it was my first college walkout, so I was pretty excited to be able to enjoy that with my teammates. And walkouts are always fun. So. Yes. Question. What's it feel like to wear the jacket? It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, with the jacket specifically, do you guys keep it until the next walkoff, or is it just kind of you know, sit around the dugout? It's my first time having it, so I have no idea. <laughs> huh? well, I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, just. 
kind of been a little bit of a scuffle recently in the last week or so. Just what it feel like tonight to just get a couple knocks in there. Obviously the game winner, but you had a couple knocks before then. Yeah, I mean it feels good. We're just constantly a grind, and Mar- Mars trying to constantly find answers for all of us. And you know, as an offense right now, we're not killing it the way we should be. But I think uh, we're turning the corner. I think we can get there really soon. Is there like an overarching reason as to why you guys don't feel like you're killing it, or is it just you know good pitching on the other side of it all? Baseball's hard, so I mean you just got to hang with it and roll with the punches and. I mean, it's better to learn off a win than learn off a uh, learn off a loss. So I mean, the fact that we're able to keep winning, with the fact that we're not hitting as well as we could be, uh, it's a good sign because our pitching staff's been uh, doing a great job keeping us in it. So um, I think once we uh, figure out our stuff offensively, I think uh, the sky's the limit. Haven't haven't talked to you in a while. How's second base treating you? I, I really like it. It's uh, definitely a little different than third, but I've been enjoying it. And, Anything specific that you guys did during the lightning delay to kind of get your legs back under you there? Yeah, we came here and played some wolf ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stayed loose and just had some good times with the, good time with the guys. Was there any, like, going into the, the 10th, was there any, like, pep talk in the dugout? Anybody gather everybody around and tell them what to do? Or you guys knew? Yeah, not not a crazy pep talk, but it was just all about getting pluses, and we knew we needed to get seven pluses that win, uh, that inning to win the game or at least tie it. So that's the only thing we were kind of focusing on and just, just trying to pass the baton to the next guy and just keep giving the team a good at bat. What, what, what qualifies as a plus? There's a bunch of things that go into it, but if it's like a hard hit ball, a hit, um, eight pitches, um, there's a bunch of different things that go into it, but anything that's positively impacting the team is a plus. Hey, I was fortunate enough to be here for your first college home run and now your first walk-off. Uh, how do you feel like you've grown from then to now? There's definitely a lot of uh, maturity, I think, that has, has come since last year. And I was a young kid, and there's a bunch of older guys last year that kind of showed me the ropes and uh, kind of just taking the advice that they told me and kind of just uh, not doing anything really too different, just kind of just, just doing my thing. You get, to, you get to keep the ball? Yeah, I got, I got the ball. Is going to do anything special with it, or is it just, uh, just another ball for you? I'll probably just give it to my parents, honestly. Okay. So you mentioned how um, you guys play with the ball, like, you know, relaxation during the you know, delays. Is there anything else you guys really do to keep yourself, like, prepared mentally during a one-hour delay like that, like, that you guys, you know, to stay active and mentally ready? Yeah, I mean, it was a really intense game, and um, it was a close one. And, I mean, I think the, the lightning delay kind of definitely, like, made us settle down a little bit. And being able to come in here and stay loose and have some fun, I think, really made – moment out there feel a little bit smaller I guess Um. makes the moment feel a little bit smaller I thought that was interesting hearing that from Drew Smith I mean in an intense game you do want to stay loose first collegiate walk-off for that guy though I don't think that'll be his last he's been playing second base a lot this year for the Ducks and I I liked hearing him say that it's it's been good to him he's enjoyed uh, that spot so far now to the pitching side uh, Michael Friend again last night was excellent Uh, he he gave the Ducks a, a chance to win. Five innings of work, uh, really solid. Four hits, no runs, no walks, five strikeouts. In fact, neither pitching staff issued a walk until the seventh inning. You like to see that, right? Mike Friend, a big reason why I got a chance to catch up with him post game after probably the best outing of his Oregon career, Michael Friend. First uh, first start since Juco per mm-hmm. Waz. Yeah. How, how'd it feel out there, man? It was fun. Yeah, it was nice to, you know, have a routine and a preparation process to get out there. But, yeah, it's not as uncertain as coming in out of the pen. So, yeah, it was nice. What What is that process for you? Um, just having the clock, seeing the clock, knowing you're going to start at 505. Um, just kind of know what's going on. You can throw by this time, do all that stuff. So. Sure, there, you know, there's things about your performance you like, things you, you, you want to clean up. But overall, put together a pretty solid outing. What's it like to see the team then come through and, and win the game as well when, when <laughs> you kind of feel like you probably did yeah. your part? It's pretty relieving. Um, you know, I trust our guys. We do a lot of high-pressure stuff at practice. So you kind of have a feeling going into the last inning, we're down three, but it doesn't really feel like we're down three. So, yeah, we got the energy good in the dugout, and it was just a good team win for sure. What do you, what do you feel like was working today for you out there? Slider. Yep. yep, we were able to throw that for strikes. Um, I got a guy on three sliders, and me and Coach Hawksworth have been working on that for a while, and we're finally starting to figure it out. So, yeah, that was a big piece, have more than one pitch for a strike. So, you through that. What kind of conversations are you guys having about what your role is going forward? Um, I don't know. Yeah, we're just I'm just here for the ride. When they call my name, I'll go out there and do it. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun for sure being on this team. You do that a lot back door to the lefty. Is mm-hmm. that just kind of like your, your thing? Have you feel like you comfort, you're comfortable throwing that? Yeah, um... 
I stand on the far side of the mound and I just feel comfortable kind of getting it out there and bringing it back in for lefties. This worked well in our early season inter squad, so we're just kind of sticking with that. So, and you're are you fastball sinker or are you more sinker? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, no four seams for me. No, <laughs> no. Do you feel uh, like you work back door with that slider, you work front door with the lefties? Mm -hmm. Do you just feel like that's a good like one two punch yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. Um, for left handed hitters, that, that front hip slide or sinker, excuse me, I think that works pretty well. Kind of gets them out of the way and then they're kind of shaky with the vision and it's good. You can look a lot of other stuff in there. So, is that, I mean, so how often did you start in Juco? Is uh, that your thing? Yeah, I started the first five games and then I got moved to the back of the pen. So, yeah. So, were you. <laughs> <laughs> were you I mean, clearly you did well. Mm -hmm. like, were, you, were you comfortable out there? Yeah. Did it feel right? Yeah, I like starting. Um, coach Robbins at Umqua, my JUCO coach, uh, he wanted to move me to the pen because that's what I assumed we were going to be doing here. So, yeah, it was just kind of a get ready type of deal. So, yeah. When was the last time you had a, a five inning outing? Uh, I think the last start I had at UCC. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember. They all yeah. kind of blur together, but <laughs> sure. yeah, it's good. Was it more fun to have that many ups in, in yes. a single game? Yeah. Yes, I love just being out there and competing. That's my favorite part of the game. So. I think you finished with 46 pitches tonight. Just uh, how does the arm feel? It feels feel good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ready to go tomorrow. <laughs> are you are you stretched out? Do you feel like you could go? I mean, you don't have, you're not going to go tomorrow, obviously. Yeah. But you feel like yeah. you could go, I don't know, on Friday or something? Yeah, I would. I imagine so with how I feel right now. I got a good um, post throw working thing going with Coach Hunter, our strength coach. So, yeah, feels good. That could be a really big deal. Uh, that's Michael Friend uh, coming off a five-inning performance, and this is kind of new to him at least this year, as he was just talking about. But in a four-game series, might need him again upcoming this weekend. We'll see. Uh, but that's the kind of that's the kind of arm, and, and and I love that he brought up Daryl Hunter, right? A former Oregon pitcher who's now working strength and conditioning for the Ducks. That's the sort of uh, focus and. Being on your P's and Q's off the field that it takes in especially a four-game series and over the course of a 56-game season. Similarly, Matthew Grabman, I saw him. He finished out the game on the mound for the Ducks. Uh, important maybe to have him back out there for Oregon. Matthew Grabman talked with the media after the win last night ahead of tonight's Game 2 against Seattle. I was just talking about the mentality you wanted to see late innings from, from you guys. And nobody really tried to be the hero, just kind of do your part. So like you that comes into the situation you're in, you know, you kind of can't be the hero. So can you talk about kind of the mentality you took and, and how that maybe fit with what the coaches wanted to see from everybody? Yeah, it's kind of just attacking the zone. Like I had some lapses in the focus, but kind of just finding that again, especially when we go down. And honestly, with this offense, anything's going to happen. I knew we were going to win. We've come back from a lot worse. I've seen it. So it's kind of just giving us a chance uh, to win. How, how are you feeling physically? I think was a couple weeks ago when you made your first appearance and you were dealing with, with that injury. Just how are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm doing really well. Uh, arm is starting to feel a lot better. Gone through a decent amount of stuff, but it's good to be back. It's good to be able to get on the mound. Where do you, uh, if you could throw a percentage on it, where do you feel like you are? I'd probably say 90, 95%. There's still that little bit of getting out there, right. getting my feet on the ground, um, but I feel really good. You were majority of starter last year. I think you had a couple of bullpen appearances, but now or first couple of appearances this year coming out of the pen. Just how is that? Is that a transition for you? You feel comfortable? Like, what's that like? I feel completely comfortable. I mean, I last year I kind of got to experience everything. I think I did everything but close because we had Malaris consistently throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, so I had those bullpen moments, and I mean, I'm versatile. I can really do anything. I enjoy it. Coming out of the pen in close games is really fun, so... How do you feel like your, your stuff played tonight? What, what was going well? I'd say probably fastball. I'm still working on that curveball. Got to throw one or two. It's new to me, especially because my arm slots come back up from last year. So that's um, definitely a change I've had to kind of adjust to. But um, I mean, it's pretty good. The, the arm slots, that, that, that change under Hawksworth this year? Yeah. How do you feel like it's working? I have to see. Yeah, no, I definitely. It was kind of my natural arm, so I feel like I dropped down last year um, some just to kind of accommodate for things. But um, I mean, it feels really good now, and I just want to build off of it. Being able to throw that curveball against live competition, obviously you throw it in practice, but it's a little bit different. Just that comfort level, how does that feel? Thanks. It's getting there. I'd say probably that's kind of the first time I've got the debut in the game besides the other two times where it's been good. Just throwing it consistently for strikes is the big thing, and that's kind of something I have to hammer down on. So it's the main focus. 
Could be a huge help for the Ducks uh, moving forward. Matthew Grabman meeting with the media there. Oregon in action tonight. A second game of a four-game set against Seattle. Everything moves up a little bit with the Easter holiday. So the Ducks and the Red Hawks tonight, 5 o'clock. PK Park, we'll see you there. Or tune in on the Oregon Sports Network and on the Quack Video live stream. Happy MLB opening day. Six Ducks on MLB opening day rosters today. Awesome to see. Every year, it's worth celebrating. Every single year, we're celebrating. Tyler Anderson, Spencer Steer, Ryan Nelson, Cole Irvin, Garrett Clevenger, and Scott McGuff. The Pro Ducks on the opening day rosters across Major League Baseball today. Day worth celebrating. All right, quick timeout. Now, when we come back, Jess Drummond. Always fun catching up with the Oregon lacrosse head coach on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun, and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you. On the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. Duck Insider, Duck Insider, Duck Insider continues after this timeout on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies because feeling full can sound like this. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. I can't believe it. And like this. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Back in the Country Financial Studio, it's Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Coming up this weekend after the spring break for Oregon lacrosse, uh, the Ducks are in action at home against UC Davis, 1 o'clock at Pat Bay Field. We caught up with head coach Jess Drummond talking a lot of lacrosse yesterday. It's been a while since we've talked uh, together in the studio. The basketball travel, you guys were traveling. So Jess Drummond, ladies and gentlemen, Oregon lacrosse head coach, let's start with the most important thing we're going to get to today. So we sat down to do the interview, and like an expert, like a veteran, <laughs> these headsets, see, there's like a split in them. And what does she do? She splits the headset right over the top of the bun, the iconic scrunchie, yep. just Thank you. Well done. Thank you. I mean, see, <laughs> do you feel like a veteran of the studio yet? I do, and I've yes. missed you. It's been a while since we've connected. So this, it's How'd good Ryan do? Fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. Are you lying? No. That's I good. would never lie. Hmm. Not on live TV. Not on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, see, that's a good review. Uh, that's a good review. But we did discuss, though, the, 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 the veteran presence. Like, now that you're in the season, does it feel like – the dog days of the season, do you let yourself feel those sorts of things as a coach, as a student athlete? I don't know. Do, do you ever get to that point? Mm. Am I supposed to not ask that so that you I can don't. be like, no, <laughs> that's never a thing. But it's a grind. There's no doubt, right? There is a grind. And to me, I love how this profession is different each season. Like, to me, I'm like, great, spring season, this is a grind, and you just know mm, it. Interesting. Summer, recruiting grind, fall, off-season grind, winter's yeah. like our little recover. And then it's like back on the grind again. Like right. I love that. Yeah, I 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, see, I just know a, my lo- I mean, it's like planned out. As, Scout, a, as, a, as a planner, I want everything to be on time in the same time routine. Yeah. I love a routine. But like you still, I still have a routine. I wake up, I do yeah. my workout, I come do practice, I cut some film afterwards, I right. watch some lacrosse. So that's good. So it's a balance. But this balance. is like season season routine mode. Yeah. Now yeah. that being said, it is spring break, and I was kind of curious about yeah. that for for you. Like, it's a chance to reset academically, literally, because yeah. you're moving from term to term. Like yeah. you were a student athlete, I know that. Yeah. Spring break is a good is it's a good great. week. It's so great. It's Look fun. At the smile on I her know. Face. I'm you like, see this? like oh. it's spring break. I'm just happy for them. I'm like, gosh, just remembering spring. You just and we're here, so you just you come to practice and you go home and you have nothing to do. No homework. No homework. No essays. They're hanging out. Lots of bonding time. Yep. We went to the Portland Thorns game on Sunday. So I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to do that. That was that. that's our you know woman in flight sponsored team bonding trip, and we got we flew in from Stanford, and we're like, great. The Thorns play went to their home opener. Cool. And that was so fun. And I'm like, to me that was a great kickoff to spring break so, how, so tell fans about that like how does something like that come together you mentioned women in flight which yep. is such a powerful part of what all we do around here so tell, awesome. hey, tell us a little bit about yeah it. so women in flight funds it and we kind of pick whatever team bonding we want to do with our team we talked to the captains and threw out a couple ideas and they're like this sounds awesome so we went to the legendary in and out on the way out <laughs> on the way up there they're like can we go to in and out i'm like yeah whatever like stood in line for far too long for fast food and very <laughs> cultural experience for a lot of our newcomers. <laughs> and I'm like, I, uh, I'm good. But they loved it. That was probably their you favorite. You got nothing. No, I don't. I'm not like in and out. I'm like, ah. Right. Oh. Yeah. I know. Boomy, whatever. Yeah. I'm not into this like cult following for in and out. Look, like, I'm hey, just not. Look, you need to meet. Have you met Todd Miles from Communications yet? I don't. Th- Todd oh. has. Todd has a bracket. Literally, this is a true story. And like a power <laughs> rankings of the most overrated things in the world. I agree. Okay. Well, anyway. I, but I'm also. I but just, your team, I wouldn't your team go to had in a and good out. trip. Your team had they a had good trip. So good. fun. Great. And, you know, one of our Canadians, little first year, has never been before. And she's like, this is overrated. And I was like, proud of you for being so confident to say that so fast. <laughs> Took one bite and was like, nope, overrated. <laughs> You know, these are the things I never think we're going to get into on Duck Insider, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, hey. and, and here we are. Here we know? are. So seeing, though, a, a, a professional event like that Thorns game, you know, <laughs> yeah. how, how, how cool is that to, to be able to sit there with your whole team? And, like, do you watch something like that differently than a fan, or were you, like, just a fan? In, I'm in a fan. Moment? I love the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team anyway, yeah. so I've been following soccer. Uh, we it's good have, that you have an office near Coach Abel. That's, yeah, that's nice. it's just yeah. so fun, and to be able to bring our team to a women's sport event and see the just the Oregon show up for that game. They yeah. had the highest turnout in the audience for home opener ever, and so cool. they were just all fired up, and I could just see them like just experiencing it together. That's like, awesome. Oh, it's just such a proud moment. And that was the beginning of spring break. Yep, um, so day one. Now, I know that the, the, the time and the clock doesn't change from like an NCAA, what you can do during the week, but I imagine rest is probably yeah. a big priority <laughs> yeah. this I'm week, like, right? Yeah, we're, we're going to stick to our same practice schedule, and then they just get to go do their own thing. We provide meals for them. Um, we've given them some per diem for lunch options, and then we have them do some dinners together, and then it's like, go, just relax, and take your time down. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, so coming up, uh, some critical, critical days ahead. Yeah. Six and three overall. I was kind of curious just to get, because we haven't talked with you about this yet, What's your assessment of the conference right yeah. now? I mean, all, all, always tough. What's the breakdown this year? Totally. Um, I think every game matters, and that's you know so important going into the Pac-12 is not to overlook any opponent. And I think everyone comes with their best game, and so you know it's a tough it's a tough conference, and we've kind of got to show up for the rest of conference and get ourselves in a position to make tournament and then have an opportunity to win there too. Yeah. So break it down for fans where you think you're at. You know, like general question: Where are you at right now? Oh and two, so that's where we're at. We need a okay. uh, we need to get some dubs. See, I tried to ask a generic question <laughs> and just let the coach Listen. run with it. And you're just I'm like, reality. You are this right is where we're at. Point. This is where we're Gosh. at, and we know it. Ah. We talk about it as a team. They know where we stand, and I'm gonna be honest with them. I'm gonna be open. We're always very transparent, and there's gonna be no fluff. But there, each day matters. Each day of preparation matters. We talked about that um, this week of our focus of like how we show up to every drill is how we're gonna show up on game day. That's like the ultimate definition of practice makes perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, we're talking about practice, but 
It matters. It does. <laughs> no, but but like so we laugh about this. But coach, I mean, like that's kind of why I start the interview with like, yeah, it's it's a grind, right? Yeah. But and wins solve so many things. But then learning from losses, I imagine, totally. that's a big key huge, too. Huge, huge. And you know, I think Cal, we learned a lot of how again, like the preparation matters. And then going to Stanford, I think we can take away some huge things that we did well and some things we need to clean up going into UC Davis. So I will always find every Monday or every first day of practice back after a game, we go through our takeaways. We talk about what improvements need to happen and what great things happen. So where do you want to see improvement in your team right now? Um, Just the discipline and and, uh, intentional with our, our, stick work and passing so I think we had some great looks against Stanford going against a zone I think we got a little excited when we saw a first pass and it's like nope nope let's just take a second find the best opportunity be very intentional with how we move that ball now this is an amateur eyes question me yeah. amateur how often do you see zone um probably half in our conference really so half yeah half. yeah I'd say half and half yeah I, I'm interested always with like the x's and o's and I, I try not to as you've mm-hmm. observed get two x's and o's because why then would we give the free scouting report to UC Davis coming up yes. but I, I, it's fascinating to me though like for an amateur like me you know to, to think about the nuances the differences like how does that affect your preparation when you have yeah. like one team that plays zone one that plays man I don't know how, how does that affect things slightly it just is a little bit different on some formations on offense um how we move the ball how we're cutting but not a whole lot changes it's more of like what we're looking for out of our sets all right so uc davis coming up at one o'clock at home at home at pape field we're hoping for like an hour-long baseball game (laughs) on saturday that starts at noon uh, because then all of us will just migrate to very deep right field of PK Park, which is Pepe Field, beyond the right field Woo. fence of PK. Uh, what do you want to see coming up? Well, what's the report on UC Davis? Um, I want us to honestly just focus on Oregon lacrosse, show up and play our game and get things done. Individuals that I wanted to ask you about. Mm-hmm. Um, Anna Simmons, yeah. leading the squad in shots. What have yeah. you seen from Anna? Um, she is just that kid you want on your team. So gritty, just goes out there, does the hard stuff, never complains, and just has that, like, go-getter mentality of, like, I'm going to get this ball back. You know, she's the one that you're going to see off of a turnover on offense, chasing that ball down to get a cost turnover in transition before it even hits to the opposite 30. So she just is a playmaker. You need a lot of playmakers, don't you? Jess Drummond talking with us. Uh, UC Davis in town, 1 o'clock. See you at Pape Field. It's supposed to be beautiful weather, by the way, at, at Pape Field on Saturday. Jess Drummond, Oregon Lacrosse head coach. Appreciate her taking the time. Quick time out, and when we return, part two of our conversation talking beach volleyball. They're headed to Idaho today. Jason Dillard, the head coach, with us next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. Woo-hoo! I'm having fun, and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager, learning the lingo. GOAT, G-O-A-T, acronym, stands for greatest of all time. As in, spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave. Dad, you're the GOAT. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe 
that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Doug Insider continues here on the Oregon Sports Network. Part two of our conversation with Jason Diller, the beach volleyball head coach. Part one yesterday, part two today as the Ducks get ready to head to Idaho for a couple matchups over the weekend. Jason Diller. So talking a little bit about the schedule, too, in yeah. a larger sense, like we, we were discussing during the break, like there's a top 20, right, in, in, in beach volleyball. And essentially the entire schedule that, that you put together is yeah. all top 20 teams. Yeah, not – Good know, scheduling. Yeah, not not necessarily on purpose. <laughs> um <laughs> Just kind of how it worked out. I mean, we got to – Tulane was a good opening weekend. Uh, Tulane's is, uh, got some votes to be in the top 20. They were in their preseason, so they'll kind of be in the mix, I think, uh, as we go along. And then we came back, and we played at Stanford, um, and we played TCU, who's, I think, four, right? Yeah, so They were four. six at the time. They were six at the time. Now they're four right behind Stanford, UCLA, USC. And – Cal's at sitting at six, and so we played, you know, TCU at Stanford, and then St. Mary's um, and San Jose State, and those were we lost those two three, so those were tough. Yeah. Um, and then you know the following weekend we go to Pac-12 South, and we basically played the three best teams, best in, the teams country, in the country, yeah, pretty much back to back. And uh, and Cal, who's a great a great beach volleyball program, um, and so you know we got to play all those guys. Right. And, uh, you know, scheduling wise, I played it reasonably well because I gave us some time off after those. Because <laughs> uh, it was tough. You know, the girls battled uh, with the exception of the USC match. I was very happy with, you know, what we wanted to execute as far as serving the ball tough, being aggressive on our offense. Um, and I, you know, if you watch us play, there's no. There's no effort issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we are out there competing as hard as we can. Um, and, you know, I mean, we have a lot in common with the teams that have played SC, UCLA, Cal, Stanford. You know, they they have a couple losses between those four teams. Right. You know, so um, I was very happy with the way we competed, uh, maybe with the exception of the, the SC match. But that was the last one of the weekend. And, you know, it's understandable to be a little fatigued mentally and physically. Well, you know, I was looking at the schedule and just in February and March, <laughs> three matches that were two, three decisions yeah. against you. I mean, yeah. I imagine like with any sport, those are the, the, the close ones are the ones that define a season to irk a coach, I bet. Yeah, those are the tough ones. Uh, you know, the St. Mary's match, um, you know, I, th I thought we, you know, like I said, it, we haven't played with kind of the lineup that we envisioned. So, uh, you know, Sophia went out with a shoulder injury. Um, you know, she finished the St. Mary's match, but really like not being able to really lift her was, arm that much. Tough. Yeah, exactly. So she gave it her best. Um, and then we had to kind of switch the lineup for the San Jose State match. And, you know, there's you want to have continuity if you can. Um, and, you know, it's difficult. Uh, but we had we had an opportunity that San Jose State uh, match, and that that was really the tough one uh, because we had a we had a lead with our ones, and they they played great, um, and then momentum kind of shifted, and we went to a third set, and San Jose was holding that momentum, and it's game to fifteen, and it happens really quickly, yeah, it goes you know, fast. and so we kind of recaptured a little momentum, but we were already down three or four, and you're only going to fifteen, so. You know, you have to play pretty much perfect, which is hard to do. So you've had some shuffling, as you alluded to. So where yeah. are you at now? Like, as the roster, are you are, is are things settling down? No, no never. Okay, good. Well, right. no, Great. like cool. we're 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 pretty healthy, um, and injuries are injuries happen. Yeah. Uh, concussions so happen. You know, illness happens. Um, so hoping to hoping to play the the lineup that we've envisioned. Um, this weekend, we got a little. We got an athlete that's got a little stomach bug, so hopefully, it's just one of those 24, 36, 48, maybe. Yeah, and right. uh, hopefully, we can get her out there. Uh, but we'll see. And if not, I mean, we're no stranger to you know shuffling the lineup right. again and and making some moves. So if we have to do that, we have to do that. Um, but like I said, I think these last two weeks, you know, coming out of Pac-12 South. You know, we wanted to do it. We wanted to address a, n a number of things, and I feel like we've done that. Uh, it's really going to come up. It's really going to come down to our ability to score points uh, and attack the sidelines and attack with with force when needed and location when when appropriate. Talking beach volleyball with head coach Jason Dillard. Uh, UC Davis, Boise State coming up, uh, traveling to Boise this weekend. Yeah. So 
on that front, I want to get to a little bigger picture, like mm -hmm. the the Big Ten transition, right? It's kind of the, the the big thing that's in the background that's going on. Well, for you, it's the MPSF transition. MPSF. So, so what? So, t take us inside that. Like, what do you have to do anything for that? Like, what's going on for fans to know? So, you know, I think when the announcement was made, first of all, it's very sad. Like, the pack has been so amazing on a number of for a number of sports and growing up watching you know, Pac-10 sports no, yeah. at same. that time. Yeah, like, it's, it's really tough. And I know everyone's kind of going through that. Um, you know, so – but you have to evolve. And I think the MPSF provides us the 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 most uh, competitive uh, grouping, mm. uh, keeps things on the West Coast primarily, uh, which is great for us, um, and maintains kind of the, the elite beach volleyball programs all in one conference. So you have us in Washington – you have Cal and Stanford, you have SC, you have UCLA, and GCU um, out in Arizona, Grand Canyon University. Yeah. And they've been – and so all of those teams, uh, you know, are the, the best of the pack. And, and honestly, like, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, I think it's great. You know, all these teams, um, you know, if you want to play against the best, this is still going to be the conference that you want to play right. in. And the national champion is likely to come out of the MPSF next right. year. Right. That's just – Yeah. You know, competition level yeah. has been yeah. high. It's pretty high. Yeah. It's pretty high. Been talking a lot about that. So so the weekend ahead then, uh, go ahead into Idaho. Uh, what do you want to see from your squad? I want to see I, – I just want to see us be committed to, uh, you know, going for more things, right? So, you know, we have a tendency to fall into not trying – trying not to make mistakes, hmm. right? And we create a ton of opportunities with our defense and effort, like I kind of talked about. Uh, we serve the ball tough to create those situations where we can make – make a play on defense mm. and then get the ball back on our side and we've just been talking about you know trying to find that open sand no matter if it's difficult or not yeah um attacking the block a little bit more basically you have a court and you have a perimeter maybe mm -hmm. one one and a half feet from the sidelines is always a good shot and sometimes we're a little hesitant to go for those um but we also don't want to be in a position where we have to dig two or three right. balls when we watch film you know, we're digging two, three balls and we're just chipping the ball back over and having to do it all over again. Right. Kind of waiting for, you know, it's kind of the Andre Agassi, you know, back right. in the 90s, 2000s, just being the backboard. Well, you don't want to. Right. We, you can't be the backboard. Controlled it's, aggression. Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you want to create that opportunity and then you got to take the big swing when you need to take the big swing. Mm. Uh, the Boise State matches uh, coming up uh, Friday and Saturday, competition against UC Davis and Boise State. But the Boise State ones are televised on Mountain West Network uh, coming up for beach volleyball. Uh, all right. Senior Day is also going to be here before yes. we know it, uh, which, which is wild. You, I feel like your season does move quickly. No, it's very fast. Uh, you know, we, you know, for us, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a bit of travel. So, you know, having the break in between is good. But you play, you know, you play – probably you know six seven events right right in, in like a span weekend. of like two yeah. months yeah so you know you get out there and you play two matches each day right. in new orleans we played three on the last day uh, which was which turned out to be a pretty big ask that's mm -hmm. a lot of volleyball in a weekend um and then you have three duels so we're lucky enough to host two of those yeah. and we just had an event versus corbin um and then we have our like you said I have, we have our senior our senior event versus bushnell out at amazon park and excited to honor our seniors and their seniors um and you know just hoping for 68 and sunny that's right it's always 68 and sunny typically that's right yep. always uh, april 9th is senior day uh 130 uh, roughly is when people can start coming out to yeah enjoy a little bit of festivities. yeah one 140 we'll probably start our our senior ceremony and cool. that'll take 15 20 minutes so you know anyone who's available come on out and and uh you know we have ashley schroeder who's been part of the program for four years she's actually going for her 40th win this weekend Woo! Uh, which would be huge for her uh in her career to get to that 40 she'd only be the second person all time to to do that wow um i don't even know if she knows that but uh, she does now she does now uh so we're 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 gonna try to get that for her um and then jensen caitlin who is a transfer from arizona state she lives in oswego um she's senior as well alina valenti who's a transfer from portland is a senior and lolo falau who's in her second year after transferring from the bay area um this is her senior year too so excited to honor those those athletes who have meant a lot to the program put their imprint on it um and continue to grow both the competitive side on the court and the and the culture side Sweet. off the court so
Sweet stuff from Jason Dillard, the Oregon Beach Volleyball head coach. They're in action this weekend in Boise and then senior weekend coming up here at Amazon Park over the next couple weeks. We'll have more updates on beach volleyball for you. Time out when we return. Those Oregon football uniforms, huh? I could just say that on every show and there'd be something to talk about. More coming on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you, on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events com. This is Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force, and I deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately, in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. My service never stops. Brought to you by End Family Fire and the Ad Council. Finishing up, Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Duck baseball in action at PK Park tonight. Looking for another win over Seattle. 5 o'clock start at PK Park. 7 o'clock start for Oregon softball. And then already underway, men's golf and women's golf are in action. Men's golf at the Goodwin. Women's golf at the Ping ASU Invitational. More updates on GoDucks.com. And on the heels of the best performance of the 2024 season, acrobatics and tumbling swept the awards. Congratulations to Cammie Wilson, named the Athlete of the Week, McKenna Carrion, the Specialist of the Week, and Bella Swartout, the Freshman of the Week. Congratulations to Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling, the trifecta sweeping the awards. Well, Oregon is always known for uniforms. I'll just say that good uniforms are coming. Calling them Generation O. You might see the video around social media. Maybe we'll revisit it tomorrow. Maybe there will be some announcements coming. Maybe we'll all find out. See you at PK Park tonight. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on. SmokeyBear.com. 